Hello everyone, this is Claudia from Bubbleswell.com and in today's video I'm going to show you this amazing watercolor technique um, that always gives you great results and what you need to do is loosely color uh, where your image will be like you need blues and reds and all the other colors and greens and then at the end just stamp in in black on top of it your image um, this works with images that you wouldn't be able to color inside so either um, only line images or the ones that will have too much black and you, you sometimes think okay how can I solve this too much blackness uh, thing and I have this this uh, stamp set from Hero Arts and it has that exact problem uh, if you would like to stamp it, you will have to either stamp it in just one color or do other techniques. But I think this one works. You might wonder, of course, why I don't first stamp the image in black and then put my watercolor. Is that I noticed that some of the colors sit on top of the black because you know watercolors are half are sedimentary, so and half enter your paper. So it depends on the colors, if they're going to sit on top of your black or um, uh, it, they're going to go inside the paper. So to avoid that and to have a really crisp image in the end, what I'm doing is I'm adding the color first. And I have a piece of watercolor paper and I just pick up colors from the palette. I in a bit water them down I don't want them to be too strong and I just put them uh, put the main colors where I think the flowers will be like on the upper flower I have the red some of the flowers can be purplish and and so on and I have a problem with this stamp set that it doesn't really stick to my stamp press so I just put a little bit of adhesive and then I can stick it onto the stamp press that's kind of solving always the problem and now what I'm going to do is just stamp the image and be sure that I keep it pressed a while so that because it's watercolor paper has some tooth the ink needs to really seep into the paper and that's kind of it so it's a very easy technique you always get different results because you know watercolor kind of has its own mind um, and I really like this kind of pastel colors <laughs> and I guess you can use it with any other other solid stamps um, just to make the background give the color of the flower and not the actual line yeah. it's quite easy to try out so you know don't be afraid uh, there's nothing that can go wrong with this this particular technique as long as you make sure that the watercolor is dry before you start stamping the black on top because otherwise everything will smear what I'm doing now is I'm creating a panel and I wanted the height of the largest lawn phone stitch die but not the width so I'm just repositioning my die and I'm going to cut again so that I have a thinner strip and that's kind of it that's going to be my panel it looks really cool and I'm going to put it um, put the sentiment on the side uh, on the length of this panel because I already have a lot of black stamped on, on the paper so I couldn't put another sentiment on top that will be too much so I decided I'm going to put it on the side and I'm choosing some pattern papers that are quite neutral and that match the colors that I used in um, in my card. I'm using the same stitch die so that I have the edges the same. It kind of gives a sense of continuity to the card and I'm going to do the same for the, this green paper um, initially I actually wanted this green paper to show quite a lot um, 
and I actually made the card um, the card base bigger I actually cut kind of a square card but then you will see how I didn't like it in the end I sometimes have that I have an idea in my mind and I think it's going to look so great so great but then when I see the end result I realize that it's not looking as I expected so I stamped on the side on that pink paper with VersaFine only black ink and I'm quite I'm cutting that strip with my scissors I don't even bother getting uh, my trimmer out uh, it's going to stay behind the paper anyway and here you see that I cut really big strip I, I made a five and a half by five and a half square card and I was thinking oh that's going to look so cool um, I adhere all the parts together so the green um, I put directly on the paper and I'm going to adhere the pink part on the back of the watercolor paper and then I'm gonna put the entire panel on some uh, foam squares up and before I do that I added some uh, twine um, this is kind of a neutral twine and I tie in a bow on the side it gives it a little bit of extra interest on that corner because that corner won't have anything and I needed to fill in at least one of the corners and I'm already thinking at this stage like wow that side is going to be quite big and I was thinking what should I put there should I put some sequins should I do something else I was already seeing the problem that I made a mistake by doing a square card I usually don't do square cards um, they're very hard to pull off in my opinion and in here I was thinking already I didn't like that much green on the side it, it felt too empty so I I actually took drastic measures here I I first wanted to peel off um, those foam squares and and to really cut it but I couldn't uh, without ruining the entire card so I decided that I'm going to try to cut a piece of the green with my trimmer and it actually worked and thus I trimmed my card and I made it actually a four and a quarter by five and a half card and then you see the green peaking just a little bit and that shows much better uh, than the B card. Um, I tied the bow um, on top of the um, entire um, panel and I think that looks much better than having it underneath it. Fiddling a bit with the bow and that was kind of it uh, for this card. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you tried this technique. I think the most of the time I spent on doing uh, the base card rather than the watercolor. So thank you so much. See you.